over the CRT threatens to shut those conversations down. And that is not all it is likely to do. Because some pushing this panic the hardest are actually using it to advance a much bigger agenda that they've wanted for a very long time. And that is school choice. Basically uh oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's the bad school choice thing? What is it? But I don't even remember him giving his argument why school choice is bad. Oh, it's really dumb. Okay. Basically, letting parents take tax dollars afforded to the public schooling of their kid and use them at any school they like. Mm -hmm. Here is Chris Rufo again, laying out that exact strategy. Wouldn't that allow poor kids to go to the good school though? Um, Across town instead of being stuck in their at their shitty school in their yeah, shitty neighborhood with no, what if, no money? What if the good school they go to, Adam, mm -hmm. is like a Christian school? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously that's that is going to be the good school because they're actually going to have like disciplinary measures. Everyone's going to be like, I would much rather go to the school where I can actually learn, and the classroom isn't complete anarchy. Mm -hmm. All the good students are going to go to the Christian school. They are. They're going to be oh, like, I don't believe this. Listen, I know I've heard of both good and bad Christian schools. So I don't mm -hmm. think you can make a blanket statement. But... I I went to a Christian school. It was good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't. Obviously. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if your parents? Did? <laughs> It'd be I've super heard... weird if my parents came put me to a Christian school. But yeah. I have had friends who are complete atheists say, "I'm gonna send my kid to the Christian school." Just because then I know <laughs> then he's safe. Mm, okay. He's safe from this stuff. Yeah, exactly. They they treat it exactly like Santa Claus. They're like, you know, when he's old enough, I'll tell him. <laughs> I'll tell him <laughs> Jesus isn't real. That's awful. <laughs> Why? Oh man, that's awful. Why? That's practical. That's not awful. Like, there you go. That's practical. You go. Can you imagine the talk? <laughs> Listen, daddy, listen. daddy, what about Jesus? Well, <laughs> daddy, my uh, my teacher said you're gonna go to hell for doing X. It's like, well, I think you're old enough now to know that's all bullshit. <laughs> there, hell doesn't exist. What? <laughs> yeah, no, it's just a lie. What? Why are you sending me to this school? Well, you know. Yeah. Listen, they, they have good graduation rates. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you graduate school. without questioning your gender? Okay, shut the fuck up. Then. There you go. It's a trade-off. Exactly. First, uh, we have to just get it out of schools. We have to ban it and abolish it. Uh, but in the long term, what we need to do is give every parent in this country a right to exit failing institutions. No child should be trapped in a failing public school that violates uh, his sense of conscience, that violates the values of the parents. Every parent should take those education dollars anywhere that they wish. Right. School choice will liberate people. It will empower people. And it will actually depolarize some of these national fights that we've seen. Oh, so you're doing all of this to tone down partisan fights, are you, Chris? Very cool of you. You've probably noticed that general wave of calm, chill vibes sweeping the nation lately. <laughs> if there is one word... He's such a conflict entrepreneur here, I which know. I just... It's so sickening well, for him talking, you know, so smugly about this. Yeah, and it, it, it's, it is frankly disgusting how this is framed with, like, Oh, it's just the right that is doing the culture war. Monitoring. Yeah. It's like, no, they're literally reacting to yeah. this, you know, neo Marxian culture war subversion that's happening. Yeah. Nobody, that's what they're nobody responding voted. To. Nobody voted for their kids to be taught white privilege. Yes. Nobody asked the parents, hey, how do you feel about this critical race theory, this white privilege uh, paradigm? We're going to start teaching it in school. Nobody asked them. They're being right. forced. It's being forced right. on them. Yeah. Right. And it's it's so disingenuous. And when you push back against that to say, oh, you're just causing division in our society. Yeah. No shit. The, I just, I don't understand because people on the left have forever been saying, you know, part of the reason why blacks are disproportionately less wealthy is because they're caught in these failing schools. Right. It's the same argument Rufo's making here. Exit these, allow the students to exit these failing schools. It works for both sides. Right. Which would hopefully also both. create more competition. Too I, for the I, said, I said the unthinkable. What? Both sides. 
Oh. All sides. It works for everyone, you can say, right? You can say both sides. It's okay. I hate saying it. Ah, oh, it's so bad. It's cringy. But I would use to describe every image coming out of a school board meeting these days. It is depolarized. <laughs> Look, it is not just Rufo. Conservative organization. Like, it's so disingenuous because Rufo literally offered a solution to the the picture man, that he showed. <clears throat> that have long pushed for school choice, like the Heritage Foundation and Freedom Works, have poured money into this fight. And of course, no school choice push would be complete without lifelong rich person and occasional education secretary, Betsy DeVos, who wrote an op-ed titled, <laughs> yeah. Let's Liberate Kids from Race Indoctrination with School Choice. And you should know, this is just nothing new. There is a long history of responding to racial panic with a push for school choice. In fact, the roots of the school choice movement trace back to the Brown versus Board of Education decision when southern states adopted voucher programs to facilitate the creation of private schools called segregation academies. And some of those... All this completely irrelevant. Completely irrelevant. Unless you're going to set up schools that are... that discriminate on people based on race. It's fucking, this is such bullshit. I know. Can you this imagine that? It's not, they can't do that. This is all ad hom, basically. It's yeah. like, listen, I'm not going to attack the argument being made now. So I'm going to say that when people pushed for school choice in the past, it was because of racism. Yeah. So therefore, if they're pushing for it now, 50 years later, it's also because of racism. But where is the causal link there? Is he suggesting that these schools that you're going to be able to use school choice to send your kid to are mm -hmm. going to be segregated by race? I don't think so. Well, yeah, and that doesn't even make sense because if, if you did have school choice, then that sh it should lead to less segregation, not more. Yes. Because... You know, uh, black parents could send their children to whatever the schools was that they wanted to not, be. Not only that, you wouldn't. Ha you would tackle the the cultural gravity thing because you yeah. have these nerdy black kids all the time that complain. You know, they're you know people say they're a traitor to their race, which is completely disgusting. Well, they mm -hmm. go to the nerdy school. Okay, problem solved, right? Right. Right. There's women nerdiness. All those people who, who are making fun of them for you know, you know, trying to be white because they're into academics, they're not there. They're not at that school. This could mm -hmm. solve so many problems, and it's it's just it's so demoralizing that we're going to say this is a bad idea just because the Republicans thought of it. This came from the right. There actually was, and I, I'd be curious to look into it. The Roland Fryer guy I was talking about specifically did a study on that to see if like the cultural gravity issue and was there um, mm -hmm. were black students who were performing better in school losing popularity as a result of themselves performing better. In what school. was the result? Do you know? Well, he, well, the video says the result said yes, but I would want to read the study because right, to know. I would assume because basically what it does is it creates like a upside down check mark mm. where like your popularity actually increases up into when you get to like the B range and then mm. it drops down when you're in the A range. Mm. And I thought that I feel like that's probably true of everyone, regardless of their race. Yeah, I think that's like a totally. white flag. Thing. Yeah. So I would have to I'd be curious to, to see that study. Jealousy starts kicking in as soon as you well, rise above. I don't, I think part of it is jealousy and part of it is just if you're, because the way the study was done was it was like, name your three best friends. Mm -hmm. And then they would create some like mathematical algorithm of figuring out your popularity based on like how many people named you as your three oh, best really? friends. Fascinating. But I would, I would think just intuitively like, okay, people that are getting straight A's or higher GPAs are more focused on school and less focused on social maintenance oh yeah exactly it's and so that seems just to be like obvious to me that that would be the way it would yeah. kind of break down but the academic student is like i have no friends 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. About? Right. So I'm like, that doesn't really surprise me. But so I, I'd have to read the study to see more specifically what it said. And if they it, see, it'd be interesting if they did, if he did a control group with white students and it was a di- completely different result, then I'd say, oh, OK. Mm-hmm. But I, f- I feel like it's probably not. I was taking advantage of school choice today sure seem to be doing some heavy indoctrination of their own. Take Florida. It is one of the states that allows public hey, money to go to voucher shit. schools. And a few years back, <laughs> an investigation into some of them found commonly used textbooks that mm. downplayed the horrors of slavery. One of them is mm. this one. America, land I love. Which has all the kind of bullshit that you would expect that the Civil War was fought for states' rights. But it also states that during the antebellum period, the slave who knew Christ had more freedom than a free person who did not know the saviour. Which is not just offensive, it is profoundly stupid. Any kid reading that absolute trombone slide of a sentence (laughs) would instantly drop two full grades. It sounds less like something you'd find in a textbook and more like something you'd find crocheted on a throw pillow in Paula Dean's living room. (laughs) So, if you want to talk about... So, okay, Mm. I don't remember if that's the only example he brings. So I looked into this oh my God. <laughs> uh, American land that I love. How many textbook. schools is it in? Five? Well, so, well, first of all, the report is obviously, you know, it's created by a biased organization right. um, for racial equity. But putting that aside, and they, they claim that this book is used in like a lot of schools. I don't mm-hmm. remember. It said thousands. It said like thousands, but it wasn't just Florida. It was mm-hmm. across the whole country. I don't know how that translates to um, but this is very easily solvable because I did look at the examples they brought and the examples were pretty dog shit, that this is a very dog shit, um, book. And I'm trying to remember, cause I, I, ha- I had the link open, but I, I think I closed it. It had much more crazy examples than the one that John, that one that John Oliver. Oh, for. really? Yeah. There were worse <laughs> examples in the book, uh, than that. However, to me, it's like, okay, well, the solution to that, and it just it annoys me when people have this like baby in the bathwater approach to things. It's like, well, the solution is if a school is going to be viable to accept public voucher money, mm-hmm. then they just have to have a certain criteria that they follow. Right. Yeah. And so you look at the book and you say, this book is insane and stupid and garbage and it doesn't follow the criteria so fuck you like there's a simple solution to this problem yeah and this harkens back to exactly what i said in the beginning which is john oliver is criticizing christopher rufo for picking extreme hyperbolic bad examples oh yeah and what does john oliver do he picks the most extreme hyperbolic bad example of a private school using you know really ridiculous textbooks yeah Hmm. So, no. Screw that doesn't mean you. that you shouldn't have private school vouchers or that you shouldn't have private schools just because you have one bad example of of from a textbook. If you make the the funding contingent on certain curricula though, you're still going to run into the same problem because they're going to say Biden's going to say you have to teach critical race theory otherwise you don't get the federal dollars. Well, <clears throat> There obviously has to be some difference between what the criteria for public school and, and private schools would be. Well, you're basically making all schools private schools, though, in the in the voucher system. Right. I guess you are you are making every school public school then, but or yeah, or private. I mean, well, you're, well, it's no, because a school could a, a school could just say it's not going to take, you know. Uh, oh, so you're right. Take yeah, you're right. The the public school the vouchers voucher and they money. can teach whatever crazy shit they want. I mean, I guess right. there's, there's still probably some criteria in order for to have the diploma recognized. But yeah, he just doesn't um, want people to be taught about Jesus because he hates Jesus. <laughs> Why do you hate Jesus? What's the matter with Jesus, Oliver? <sighs> Why is he a uh-huh. Jesus hater? Uh huh. <laughs> You've met Jesus. I have. Yeah. You don't like when I talk talk about my story where I met Jesus. You, you met whenever him, I talk about did my you story meet him at your Jesus, bar mitzvah? Yeah, whenever I talk about how I met Jesus at my bar mitzvah, Adam gets very uncomfortable. I, I'm surprised he bring this up. I don't get uncomfortable. What are you talking you about? You get very uncomfortable, yeah. 
Well, everyone's going to just target you. It's the one thing. <laughs> as soon as we get big, as soon as we become rich and famous, the, the, all mm. the Jesus clips are going to come together. It's going to be like a montage. <laughs> a montage of me talking about how I personally Sitch crucified Jesus for my bar mitzvah. About, talking about his participation mm -hmm. in the act of injustice. I know. <laughs> Racial indoctrination. Don't get yourself in trouble. <laughs> ...of school kids, this might be a better place to start. But the thing is... I hate... I, I'm so triggered. <laughs> I fucking hate John Oliver. Well, it's like, why... But why does it have to be an either-or? Yeah, can't why have, are we indoctrinating kids, you moron? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I don't want... I don't want bullshit indoctrination from the left or the right, right. for my children. Like, I want my children to just fucking learn education in right. a non-culture non-religious biased non-woke yeah. biased way so it's like fucking just remove all this shit from schooling if the parents want to talk about it then they can fucking talk about it yeah it's simple but adam what about this indoctrination what about it i know yeah what about this indoctrination fuck you even a manufactured panic is a panic those parents at school board meetings are genuinely angry. And as any little league coach knows, once you reach a critical mass of angry white parents, there will be... Racist piece of shit. <laughs> he is totally... I mean, he's playing into the stereotypes here. I guess black parents don't get angry, Sitch. I guess Asian parents, they don't get angry. It's only angry no. white parents. Well... There's this like very gross thing that and this is what triggers a lot of white people is that it's like this this dismissive attitude that if you're white and you're upset about something mm -hmm. you shouldn't be because you have quote unquote white privilege. Oh, you're right. Yeah, he's fucking with a, my subconscious. And it's a total. It's like it's so funny because it's basically the same as you know when when you're talking to a woman who's upset and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're just on your period. <laughs> Okay, because you're yeah, you're you're saying I'm dismissing your emotions and your concerns on the basis of some biological fact about you. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's saying I'm I'm dismissing your concerns and your anger as a white person because of some biological fact. Yeah, oh, and it's then so it double repulsive. It is repulsive, and then it's like a double fuck you to white people who are not well off, because basically the attitude, oh, yeah, the attitude that the woke brigade puts forward is like, oh, you know. This society is built all around white privilege. It's built all around catering to white people. And so I'm sitting here and if you're like, you know, not a well-off white person, you're like, oh, are you saying I'm a failure that this entire society is catering to me because oh. I'm white and yet I still haven't, you know, reached some economic level of success that other white people have? Yeah. This Which is, and it's so obviously insidious. bullshit, yeah. right? But that's the thing. It's obviously bullshit. There's lots of problems in our society that of, of of society and, and, and our government and our system and our culture fucking over lots of people and to just frame it purely from this race perspective is to blind yourself to, I would argue, the majority of the picture of what's going on.